Well, hey, hey, YouTube. It's day two with this install, actual installation day. We were digging all day yesterday. It got a little bit boring, so I don't want to bore you with that. And Mr. Abraham is laying out the roof here for this three-panel solar array install. We're going to talk a little bit about the wire and talk a little bit about what we're doing. So one of the most crucial details on a roof like this, and in any roof, is how you are going to attach to the roof. We've got a standing seam, kind of a weird panel, and if you look, we've also got some wobble, would you call that wobble factor or slope factor on there, the way the roof's doing? we got a good combo of both. we got a combo of, of, uh, of, of ski, we got a little ski slopage, and then we've also got a little humpage. Would you call that humpage? Um, That's a, called a mid hump right there. So we're going to try to take it, take it out as much of that as we can by using the adjustability of the rack. Uh, the snapping rack stuff comes with a slotted L foot, so you do have some adjustability to what you're doing. You can adjust that way up and down the roof. You can also adjust this way. You got the clamp, Abe? Yeah. Show them this clamp real quick. It's filming here. So there's the clamp. We're going with a uh, different clamp. This is a not an S5 clamp. This is actually called an Ace clamp. And the really nice thing about it is the I pull one out of my personal stock. It grabs, here. To, it grabs to the contour of the standing seam. Yeah, it, it grabs to the contour of the standing seam, but then if you can see how this bolt comes in at an angle, what that does is when you tighten this thing up, instead of kicking this, a lot of time these S5 clamps, they'll kick it one way or kick it the other, but they factored in that that happens, and when you tighten this thing down, it keeps that keeps it straight on the roof and it really doesn't cause any problems if it's a little bit like that or that because the racking still mates up fine but it just looks a lot better and in my opinion attaches better and what was that word you used that time got good purchase it's got a little bit better purchase because of the way that these nubby there's two nubs instead of a set screw you got a big old instead of a captive uh, hex head when you use a hex head you've got a big old nine sixteenths that you're tightening down and then you got those two little studs so we're going to build this this rack for these 12 panels do all the wiring to send it to a high voltage charge controller on the other side of the property high voltage i mean uh coming in about 140 volts when it's cold and maybe 90 to 100 when it's not now if you'll approach quietly we can find engineer 775 in his natural habitat one of the things a lot of people don't know when they see his highfalutin lifestyle of the celebrity status of this YouTube channel is that this guy loves dirt. He just loves to dig. And folks, he can flat out rake. Look at that. I've seen many an argument with people about proper raking technique. This guy loves to rake. There's just, you know, you gotta do it right or don't do it at all. He's got a, he's got some New York work ethic. Man, he loves to rake. What am I, am I hearing a radio or something? Yeah. You got a radio going? Yeah, I told him to get a, yeah, we're gonna pull the string, aren't we? So this is basically an ultimate pro tip. After you bury your conduit, what you're gonna do is take a little piece of string, tie a plastic bag to it, there was the bag, some people call it a rat, and then you suck the string through with a vacuum. We just use this cordless, Ryobi vacuum right here. So now we have some mule tape in there. This is what it looks like. It's got numbers on it, which these are kind of faded, but this stuff is really good for pulling and um, you can get it at the electrical supply house. Plus. Yeah, the mule tape is multi-purpose. Yeah, but we, but you pulled your daughter yeah, out I've with it. I pulled cars, four-wheelers. I, I, I let some Mexicans tie off with it. I throw it in my four-wheeler toolbox, it's awesome. So here it is, showing it to you. This, will this be the first one installed? No, there's another one. It, that, that other guy, Chris's Ron guy, Tom. already got his installed. Does he really? Yep, it's already installed. So this is not the very first of the what, solar. Is he running? Yeah. He's running. Solar Direct. Man, we got to get back to civilization. I can't get a cell phone. So we're going to be doing a Solar Direct air conditioner. It is 75 sear. Yeah, and it also, no, we're not kidding there, are we? No. Also runs off of uh, 240 volt AC. So he's going to have the ability to run uh cool this structure to freeze this structure we're gonna freeze he, he, he said he was building a uh, food cooler but we're gonna build him a freezer 
And this is um, a cool bot got on. an insulated floating slab on this building with uh, eight inch block walls. And then uh, he's got it studded out with two by sixes and foam insulated. And so this thing is super well insulated. Um, and Abraham and them are back there banging on the racking. We are doing some electrical work. Well, we're coming off of the second solid day of working on this job. You can see where our conduits come in and come around this very busy area. There was some things in here that we did not know about. And uh, see there, I got my PVC pipe, two inch pipe coming up out of the ground. Strutted. And uh, got a pull box right there. Got our mule tape in. So. There's my two solar air conditioners. One's going to my house, one's going to grandma's house. Pretty excited about that. There's the big boss right there. So we got a lot done today. Got the racking up for the panels. It's gonna be 12 solar panels. This guy built this. He called me and asked me the dimensions for 12 panels and I told him and he built that building straight up exactly. So we got those, our snapping rack. You guys were asking specifically about the wiring. Here is our other pull box slash gutter yeah, or wireway. There's my disconnect. Going to be wiring the panels in strings of three. I'm using midnight high voltage breakers. These are 15 amp, 300 volt. I'm, I'm filming. Oh, sorry. It's all right. I'm working. Quiet, though. Oh, you're working? I'm working. Oh. I don't know what you're doing. This, that's a high voltage combiner. You're going to be coming in in strings of four. There's three of them. We're going to be pulling a number four wire. And um, it's about 300 feet. I'm not going to go nuts on voltage calculations. If you really want to know that stuff, you can go on to Soul Power People or a million other places where they really teach you how to figure out voltage drop, how to size the wire, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of a lot of discussion of that, but we talked about it over lunch, right, boss? It's either a 10 yeah, like 20 or like 20% loss. Yeah, 20% loss. It's either a 10 <laughs> or an 8 or a 6 or a 4. There's just not that many different sizes of wire. We are going to be pulling copper. There's the hot spot. And um, we're excited to fire, fire this thing up tomorrow see how she runs. One more thing I might add is we do have two different conduits. There's a conduit for the AC, a conduit for the DC. So we're going to try to keep our DC and AC circuits separated. This is going to the AC sub panel inside the building. And there's that DC circuit. Um, this is the solar air conditioner. Which is AC DC. AC DC can run directly off AC grid power or can run directly off of, uh, solar panels. No, no grid power needed. It's 12,000 BTUs. 75 sear. Yep, 75 sear. Nobody believes it. Everybody's going to get enraged. The comment storm, let it begin. <laughs> Solar air conditioner. Hope nobody puts that heart attack medicine in our drink at Denny's. We're having one of these. There's the inside, uh, the head unit of this mini split. So, uh, this is, I'll get some better light in here later, but this is, this is uh, his off-grid food storage building. And then there's the 17 inch thick walls. Show them how thick those walls are. Yeah, so he's got 17 inches of uh, foam and concrete and insulated goodness. So I do think this mini split would be able to cool that.